This was the world in 1950, and this is the world in 2100. Today, we're talking about the world's aging population. This is the world in 1950. Every marker in this visualization represents 10 million people, and each sector of the diagram represents one age group. The youngest group in pink is the largest, and the number of people in that sector below the age of 15 is almost 24 times as many as the people in the oldest group in white, people aged 75 years and older. This is the start of the baby boom era of the World War II, and when we approach current time, we can see how that large group is getting older and having, while well, fewer than their parents, still two, three or four children of their own. And now almost all children are surviving in the high income nations. By the turn of the millennium, the development is going faster than ever in the middle and low income nations, but the number of children is no longer increasing, despite that we are three times as many people on earth by now than in 1950. The groups are more evenly distributed as the older groups are growing and catching up. The decline in child mortality is one important aspect of this shift. More people, almost every child born, is surviving and able to have children of their own. But medical improvements are also at play here. Advancements in care, treatment and medicine improve our chances of surviving diseases and lessens the risk of us catching them in the first place. I have covered the change in life expectancy before on this channel, and the change is rapid across the planet. But we're starting from different positions, so the age distribution within nations vary. Here we can see a few examples of where nations stand today. When we're living longer lives, we're in general increasing the number of years an average person can expect to live in good health and with the ability to support oneself financially and socially. But we're also seeing an increase in the number of years a person is expected to need care and support from family in some cases and from the welfare systems in some cases. Of course, in most cases, both the family and the government can offer support to at least some extent. This puts a financial stress on the caregiver and disproportionately affects women who care for family members to a much greater extent than men. While the closest family might be affected with increased costs and a reduced ability to work, the government is faced with having to direct a larger share of its budget towards hospitals and caring units. The so-called old age dependency ratio, OADR, is increasing in most nations. The number of older people every working age person in society must support financially. When we pass into the future, we can see the development from earlier continue, and the younger groups are stabilizing, and even starting to decline slightly, while the older groups in green, blue and white are increasing faster. By 2100, 14% of the world's population is above 75, up from 4% today, and 1% in 1950. The share of people below 30 is 40% by 2100, down from 50% today and 60% in 1950. But while the increased need in care can be a burden for society, 
This is, of course, generally a positive result of hard work and decades of positive development. And people are working longer and contributing to the economy for a greater number of years than before. And the number of children per person has also gone down and is continually on the decline, meaning less resources must be allocated to the other large group in society in need of support, children and students. Spending additional years in university and not graduating until 25 or 30 might lessen the impact. But then again, you're hopefully a good economic investment, contributing more than if you had not educated yourself. Pension schemes or retirement plans are the major financial mean for people after their working age in many nations, and the cost of those is likely to go up. But with an increased productivity across your lifespan, this might not necessarily be as big of a cost increase. The composition of public transfers via, for example, a retirement plan, economic support from family and use of private savings vary greatly between nations, so it is difficult to say something generally applicable across the board. Immigration of younger people can also affect the transition and slow it down across a longer time frame. This is the geographical distribution of people older than 75 in the world today. And this is the distribution in the year 2100. Thank you for watching this video on the age composition of the world. If you enjoy my content, you can support me by subscribing or checking out some other content I made suggested on the screen right now.